Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. Hey everyone, Clayton here from XY Advisor. Um, Kind of an interesting topic we've got here today. Uh, As all advisors know, um, superannuation is an interesting topic in that most people don't retire enough. Um, But as you know, the the statistics show, women typically retire with half um, of what men do. And there's been a bunch of suggested solutions for this but today we get to talk about uh super rewards with pascal and um i was introduced to you via chris bates very respected advisor uh as he's a mate of mine but he also likes to think outside the box and then i had a chance to sort of sit down meet with you go over what the product does and as someone who has uh, a little bit of experience in finance and, and solving problems or potential problems or potentially solving problems, I should put it, uh, financial problems with, with product, uh, what you have come up with is kind of unique. So thanks heaps for coming in. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when, uh, when you're not all over the TV and, uh, and talking to government <laughs> committees, um, you're also a bit of a, a, bit of a founder uh, I know that you uh, at one stage were in charge of Human Super, um, and I know that you have uh, spent a bit of time parlaying, I guess, the problems that you found there into a, a very unique solution. So, can we really quickly go over what it is that the problem that you wanted to solve, and then let's go into, I guess, how you came up with the the tactic sure so i guess when i look back at it it's been a a long journey um so my background is in financial services marketing and pr working for jp morgan bt financial group and, and and so on so i had you know 20 plus years right working in the big end of town blue chip company so i'm very familiar with how to build a brand and build a product and bring it to market Now, I stepped out of that um, corporate environment to have children. um, And when I was on maternity leave with my twins and they were nine months old, I thought, oh, what what better time to launch my own custom jewelry business so that I can, you know, because I'm not busy (laughs) enough, um, so that I can do something from home, something I'm really interested in. Um, And that journey uh, really schooled me in uh, startup and tech and e-commerce and digital and so on. Um, along the way, there was another child. <laughs> so, and, and again, I found myself with another, you know, period outside outside the workforce. Um, but you referenced um, Human Super, and that was a tremendous market research opportunity for me in, in many ways. And there was, you know, I did a lot of presenting to rooms filled with women. And there was always this moment where I would say, okay, ladies, have you heard of the gender pay gap? And they'd all put up their hands. Then I'd say, right, have you heard of the super gap and, you know, crickets? Oh, really? This is the thing. Oh. Everyone, everyone or most people understand that the gender pay gap, but they have not actually joined the dots between that and super. Right. Right. So, and then my next question would be, okay, you know, how much super do you have? And of course, you know, varying responses, 50,000, 100,000, whatever. And then I would say, do you know how much you need? And again, crickets. Yeah. And this is because, you know, you know, I'm talking to women who don't take financial advice, which that's 80% of the Australian population. Yeah, right? totally. So, and then I would spell it out for them. I'd say, okay, so ASFA says that to have a comfortable retirement, a single person, because let's work to the worst case scenario, needs um, $25,000 a year. And that's, that's pretty budget. That's, you know, lights on, baked beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it assumes home ownership. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you need 25000 a year and you, let's say you live 20 years after you retire, that's half a million dollars. And after I would spell out that equation, there was this moment where you would hear a pin drop and then these women would look at me with fear, panic, terror, or all of the above, and tears. Yeah. And then they would say to me, but what do I do? And I'm entirely sympathetic to that question because you can't tell these women to double their pay overnight or uh, get a second or third job or just divest themselves of, you know, children, husband, elderly parents. So there was this, that moment really resonated with me because it showed me that women are stuck and they're trapped. Yeah. So the, that bit stayed with me. Meanwhile, also in the background, I was studying my work with the Australian Gender Equality Council where I'm Director of Communications. And through the data and research that I learned there, um, I understood that the headline gap of women retiring with 58% as much super is, it is just that. It's a headline gap. It's a headline problem into which we have got a number of feeder problems being you know, the fact that equal pay is still unequal after 50 years of legislation. Um, and we're sitting on a 21% uh, gap on total remuneration for anyone who wants to know. Um, then we've also got the cost of childcare. Horrendous for those who are not, uh, you yeah, know, crazy. conversant. And the actually, the cost of two children full-time childcare is greater than the average woman's full-time salary. So women are literally being priced out of returning to work. Okay. Then we have a government who is, uh, you know, making tweaks at the edges, but not the wholesale reform that we need. And last but certainly not least, we have a, um, you know, a society where the traditional woman's work is not valued. Now, P- PwC did this fascinating research a couple of years ago where if they put a dollar value on all the childcare and the duties and looking after the elderly, et cetera, every year we'd add $2.2 trillion to the Australian economy. So that's, that's what, what it's worth. It, it's a shed load of money. So uh, you, you asked me how this idea came about, and it's, it's a combination of both education, uh, observation, and experience. And also, I think like most... Um, like most startups, it comes from a place of pers- like a personal pain point. So uh, l- last year, my, um, my husband's father was terminally ill, lived in Wagga, which is a six-hour drive from Sydney. My husband, who's very uh, good around the house, um, it, he was just not there, right? And so I found myself with the three children. I I'd, I'd, uh, was out of work at, at the time, or sorry, I'll rephrase that. I was out of full paid, uh, you know, <laughs> paid employment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just, because of the load of caring with what was going on with my husband's situation, I found myself, you know, I was on the phone or supporting family members, etc., cetera, um, doing stuff, what have you, between two and three hours a day, in addition to all, you know, all the things with, with our three children. The little was, one was only two at this stage. And it got to the point where I thought, you know, I couldn't actually be working full time because this, all this caring and all this responsibility is just soaking up all of my time. Now I was pretty cranky about life (laughs) because it was, it was obviously depressing and, you know, relentless and, and, and so on. And I was doing all this work, which, you know, was unpaid and, and not fulfilling in any way, shape or form. Meanwhile, I'd started using an investment app where they, it had a rewards program attached to it. Oh, yes. And I found within a few weeks, my behavior had changed on two fronts. Firstly, I kept coming back to the app to shop. Was it Acorns? I'm not going to say who it was. (laughs) (laughs) But, But secondly, my behavior had changed in that my mental outlook was so much better. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Well, I, you're finally in control and you, you, you master your own destiny, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. I, and now my time spent buying the school yeah, yeah, shoes, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. doing the groceries, the, you know, everything else, it was now being monetized. Yeah. And I, it was literally like a light bulb went off in my head and I thought, wow, you know, given every, all the work that I'm doing with the council and all my previous experience of watching women, you know, panic when they find out they're on a hiding to nothing with their super – why don't we do this for women and for super? And that was the genesis of super awards. Yeah. It's so, uh, I remember hearing a quote maybe four, maybe five years ago. And, and it was something along the lines of, uh, entrepreneurs will solve the world's problems. 
And I, what, what, I, what I just really respect about uh, what you've done, and I'd like to go into it, is you, you're looking at a problem uh, and it's like, as you mentioned, a top-down approach doesn't necessarily work. You know, there's, there's, there's just, I mean, there's so much uh, stagnant behavior in, in culture and, and it can take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years for, for all kind of change, mm-hmm. right? So um, it's not a unique problem to, to, to come up against. It is, to see sort of rapid change is very difficult in society. So um, that's why entrepreneurs can work in the gaps and are pretty agile and can kind of achieve results where government can't. Yeah. And um, and so you've come along and you said, okay, so, and, and this is my interpretation. So, <laughs> sure. so <laughs> um, how I look at it and how I've sort of spoken to other advisors about it is uh, in the event that someone purchases an item from mm-hmm. a shop, um, you currently have the option to use a flybys card or a frequent flyer points card or, or whatever and that then gets you points in an ecosystem where you can purchase stuff right yes straight like super strangely enough there and this is anecdotal but i'm sure other other advisors would back me up here whenever i meet someone that's in dire straits um financially i can almost with 100 percent accuracy predict that they will have a lot of frequent flyer points really yeah there's a huge correlation Correlation. absolutely between poor spending habits Uh, because people respond to these uh promos yeah Mm -hmm. it's it's it's, uh it's the motivating behavior works and so you've taken that existing let's call it a paradigm Mm -hmm. and um and you've converted it into well rather than getting flybys points so you can get a toaster at the end of the year Mm -hmm. um you're getting these companies to put money into the superannuation accounts of the person purchasing the items. Absolutely. These are including Apple. Yes. Including Woolworths. Yes. And probably some other big ones as well, yes. right? Yes. So so I look at that and I go, okay, so you've noticed a problem uh, and you're solving it in a really entrepreneurial way and uh, it... it Yes, women make 80% of the purchasing decisions and, and financial mm-hmm. planners are very familiar with that. Um, and, but it's not, spe- so it's not specifically for women. It's just you identify the problem as a, as a female problem. But now you've opened this up to not only women and obviously 80% of your clients will end up being women, but there's no thing that, you know, no men allowed kind of thing. Oh, ab- absolutely not. No, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's designed for women because yes. of the super system is not designed for women and, and therefore they are more behind uh, economically, but we're open to any gender. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, talk to me about, because we, we were speaking before we, we launched, uh, we, we started recording here. Um, momentum's a big thing. Yes. And, um, and talk to me about the momentum that you felt with, Human super, so talking about superannuation mm-hmm. compared to the momentum of super rewards, which is essentially talking about spending, which converts into superannuation. What what are the differences that you can sort of, you know, um, talk about in in yeah. which I think translates into how to get people involved in their superannuation? Yes, but but through the route of spending. But does that make sense? Absolutely. So the. And, and I must clarify that my time at Human Super was was quite short. Right. Um, and but what I did note, as I said earlier, it was a great market research opportunity. Yes. Um, and the the way that women would think about their super, and these are my observations, yes. were that oh, it's also complicated. Mm-hmm. Where do I start? How do I choose a fund? Yeah, which is very common. Uh, all, all, all the que- I'm sure you've heard yeah. all these questions, and and it's there's a real um, uh, apathy around different super funds, and I've heard stories from the other side of the fence that um, you know it's hard. Sometimes you know your existing super fund provider won't release your funds because the address on your 
you know, that they've sent you a letter to. Oh, it doesn't totally. match on th- what they have on file, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So there's a, ho- there's a big... They design it for it to be difficult. Uh, it's, that's right. You it's, know. It's, from a marketing point of view, it's brilliant. Oh, absolutely. I mean, talk <laughs> about sticky money. You know, yeah, exactly. And, and, and those, you know, if you're trying to consolidate, of course, um, that, that particular company doesn't want, want you to take your funds out. You know, turkeys don't vote for Christmas. So <laughs> they... Um, um, but but for women it be- becomes this whole oh my gosh super so complicated and I don't I don't know where to start and you know who's the best fund and there is a real um, so with all the complexity around super and also the fact that it is such a long you know time oh, to retirement ages so people can't really visualize themselves in in that um, in that moment so. They were, they were, and I think will always remain some of the blockers, frankly, around 100%. super. Yeah. But shopping, <laughs> rewards, yeah, yeah, cashback yeah, 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 loyalty. Yeah, yeah. This is something we all <laughs> know and understand and, yeah. and love. Yeah. And so what, what we've done with super rewards is because it's compatible with any super fund or SMSF, we're just changing the way that the conversations had. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the whole, um, and I think it's fair to say that the whole um, government and, and even industry message of women need to be better financially educated so that they can top up their super, mm. not working. Yeah. Just just quietly, everyone, just not working because we're not yeah. seeing any, really, any, any significant no, no, ed- change in, in the super gap. Education does not lead to better results. Essentially, you need to attract, engage, and then you can start playing around with educate exactly yeah. exactly but um you, you know that 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 um trope of, of people need to be better financially educated so that they can da, 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 is actual it's Bollocks. actually a fallacy well thank yeah, you yeah. Yeah, i was going to say fallacy <laughs> but <laughs> but it is and yeah. so a why we continue or why the industry continues to hit its head against brick wall mm. expecting a different outcome is frankly crazy um but the second reason it doesn't work is because if we think about the shape of the female population in Australia, so there's 6.7 million women um, age 18 but, and to 64, and so they could all be in the workforce. Now, of that, um, of that cohort, 40% are not working. Yeah, okay, that's pretty large. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 40% are not working for reasons of you know, looking after the elderly, childcare, et cetera, et cetera. They might not want to. They might not want yeah, to. Yeah. And, you know, there, there are some women who are lucky enough to not have to work. Yeah, totally. So props to them. But, um, but you know, 40% aren't working. 36% are working part-time casually. Yeah, right. So which what, is, we've got like a quarter huge. of women that are working full-time. That's exactly right. Yeah, and right. that compares to half of men who are working full-time. Yeah, right. So this idea that women should top up what is a system design deficit mm. with this mythical money tree mm. is just it's crazy sure. so n- not there's actually two issues they don't have the money because they're not earning an income but secondly there isn't um, a, a framework or a, from an operational perspective there isn't a mechanism for them to make regular payments into super right? yeah so if what i mean by that is if you're in the workplace you give your super details to your hr team and they send all the super details off of the employees off to, you know, a clearinghouse like Click Super or Super Super, yes, whatever. Yes. What do you do if you're not in the workplace? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we've, we've, pretty, yeah. we've inadvertently built a super clearinghouse well, for those out of the workforce don't, as well. Don't kids uh, double as a HR department? <laughs> not mine. <laughs> 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 sure, mum. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll register this with uh, AMP Clearinghouse. Uh, that's right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm flat out getting them to you know put their sh- school shoes on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Exactly. <laughs> so that's um, that was that's really the um, you know we to your point we we identified really where the problem is yeah. um, and we found we found a way you know engagement wasn't working. Um, or, or the, the industry message wasn't working, yeah. so we've we've just we've changed the way the conversation has had, and yeah. so we're saying, come to Super Awards, yeah, do all your shopping yeah. from our 130 retailers yeah. on Super Awards, and that way we'll get you engaged with your Super. You can see, you know, how many Super Awards you have pending. You you can see how much, you know, you have contributed to your Super Fund in any one 
you know, tax year. Yeah. And that way you're, you're keep actually keeping an eye on it, right? And yeah, you're, it is you're cool. more conscious of it. You're more aware of it. We're bringing super into the everyday. Yeah, it, it's definitely pretty cool. So like this is not a financial product first and foremost. Correct. Is it? Yeah. No. But it, it's, it's an intermediary between the bank and the super fund. Yes. Like the, you, you, yeah. you're spending money. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then the actual, the, the contributions are coming from the companies themselves, right? Bingo. Yeah. That, I, how on earth you got companies to put money into people's super, I'll, I'll never understand. <laughs> the, the tenacity that you must have to walk into those, those boardrooms, I, I think is fantastic. Um, so, so the thing that really attracts me about this is because uh, spend, like, no one likes a budget, but people like a spending plan. And, yes. and it's, uh, they're, all, they're the exact same thing. It's just one is focused on what you can't have and one is focused on what you can have. Yes. And um, as an advisor, I, I focused very much on the spending of my clients because there's a lot of, for, it, for all the you know, people that aren't working full-time, there's also a small percentage of people that are working full-time and earning really good money and have nothing to show for it. And so, um, so I focused very specifically on sort of this problem. Was often people that worked in finance um, and they had a good salary, uh, it just didn't go anywhere. And so the very first thing I would do is focus on their spending plan and sort mm-hmm. of set in, um, in some structure around where the money was coming from, also where it was going, and, uh, and I end, end up... I ended up writing a book on this um, and basically it was all centered around how to automate your cash flow so Mm. that you would achieve minimalism of the mind, I guess you would call it, right? Yes, yes. So you had less to focus on um, and the easy path to get someone to care about what their monetary situation was at 90, which reflected a monetary situation at 65, Mm -hmm. which represented a monetary situation today Mm -hmm. right because that's a very long bow Mm -hmm. um the way that i could get people to care all the way up here via age 65 was to focus on where they were spending their money today right and and that's where there was a strong connection to okay so you've got x amount of dollars coming into your bank account what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that by y amount of dollars that's going to become salary sacrifice Mm-hmm. Um, and differentiation in taxation rates means that you're saving 20 or 30 percent in tax. Um, so you don't act, even though you're putting that money into super, you're not actually losing it from your bank account. And there was a there was a that that moment of getting someone to care about this huge trajectory of their life came down to how much I was spending on, let's say, eating out that week. And so why I appreciate what you've done, even just as like a strategy, because it's focusing on it. I think, I think personal finance in general, and we sort of alluded to this earlier with in regards to edu- education, not solving the problems that we say it solves, is because we look at, we look at money rationally and we go, okay, uh, we're going to solve this with education. But money is far more emotional than it is rational absolutely and so spending just happens to be because it's so because the the time distance to to money leaving your wallet and money coming into your wallet is is so short that the emotional engagement that we have with our money is much more uh stronger the closer in time that we get to spend it Mm -hmm. and so any any strategy which centers on um leveraging behavior that we implicitly do in in which case um spending so any strategy that we can link to spending Mm -hmm. um i think from a financial planning point of view makes just so much sense because you're not trying to push a square into a round hole right you're just leveraging exactly uh the psychology that people are already acting out and already have familiar patterns so by telling your clients right so how do you do your weekly shopping okay 
Well, rather than doing that, can this Qantas frequent flyer business start spending your money here? That's right. Then more money ends up in your bank account over here. Hello. Uh, absolutely. And, and It makes so much sense just saying it out loud. That, that's right. That it's kind of crazy that... No one's thought of it before. No one's done it. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. And, 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 and so I, we, we sit here blessed and giving thanks for that. But, um, but uh, to, to your point, uh, you know, we, I, I totally agree that you can't live, and I'm sure you would have said this a thousand times as well, you can't live off your points in your retirement. No. Um, and the other thing that we are very clear on, super clear, and, and you'll, I'm sure you'll be happy to hear this from a compliance perspective. Yes. We are, we are not advocating incremental spend. Totally. We are simply saying, look, instead of shopping, you're going to be shopping online at Woolies anyway, or buying, you know, school shoes for the kids, or uh, booking a holiday with PO or, or whoever. Just do all those same things via Super Awards, and in the process, you're you're building up your Super. Yeah. No. So, what would be the average amount? that would get deposited. And first of all, these, sure. these would be non-concessional contributions, correct? correct? Yeah. Correct. So how much uh, would an average person expect to deposit over the course of a year? Uh, so the average cashback on the site is 5%. Right. Right. So um, without sounding waffly, um, it's very – if you shopped online at Woolies every week – and you know, I spend three hundred dollars because I have hungry children. Yes. So, so my average cash back is over five dollars per week, just cool. for bullies. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and then let's say I buy clothes for the kids and maybe you know a couple of items for my husband and me. Um, and then maybe I book a holiday with Pino. You know, two and a half thousand. I can see up to three hundred and sixty dollars a year from Super Awards. Cool. And and one of the things um, that we spoke about offline, and I think it's important, is that. This also triggers um, the low income dollar for dollar. That's or, right, listo. Yeah, yes. listo from from the government. So that's right. Walk us through a little bit through the, like that. So through through super awards, um, you know, because you are contributing to your super, um, uh, the government says, you know, if you reach a threshold of a thousand dollars um through your own contributions which super awards are deemed to be your own contributions yeah, even no. though they're coming through the from the retailer originally yep. um then you are eligible for the government co-contribution of 500 dollars. yeah awesome so i mean I, d- I don't remember the last time anyone gave me 500 dollars for free but um <laughs> but the government uh has has this available for low income earners yeah. and and we as we discussed previously um you know half of women earn less than $34,000 a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy so in they would all So they, they would, would all, all be... Get access. Correct. They'd all be eligible. Yeah, That's it's, right. it's kind of interesting. Um, the way that I sort of look at it from a, 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 like a financial planning strategy point of view that if there was, say, clients who, uh, you know, were low... In, well, at least, you know, the let's say the wife is um, looking after the kids and not mm-hmm. in... Uh, paid employment, correct? I believe Thank you was very much. the uh, yes, terminology that, used that's before. exactly it. Because uh, um, it's work, buddy. It is work. <laughs> I have no doubt. Um, so uh, uh, then, using the co-contribution from the government, you can still maybe you'd be looking, say, up to a thousand dollars a year, yeah, yeah. Um, which is great, right? Like that's a that's a really good thing. Um, any which way you slice it. and But here's the other thing, and, and I think you, this is probably not um, uh, alien. Like, I'm sure you've thought about this before, which is if someone is using this product mm-hmm. and they're getting, let's call it, it's not a substantial amount of money, but it is an amount of money, mm-hmm. especially if they're uh, the low income and they're getting it doubled by the, uh, the government. Mm-hmm. This is going to create engagement, which will in turn create education, which will in turn provide some uh, a feeling of being in control. Well being. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And so, it, I'd imagine that this would act as a motivator mm-hmm. to do more. 
So you're going to get, exactly. I think, two two effects after this. You're mm-hmm. going to get... It's going to spur further uh, action, I believe. Yes. And then it's going to also deliver positive emotions. Yes. So uh, anything... I think from an advisor's point of view, anything we can do to get people engaged, caring, focusing on, thinking about education on superannuation is uh, is a huge win. And uh, and again, linking it to, to spending. And like, it's just a brilliant idea. Like, I hate to say oh, it. P- people are probably <laughs> thinking I'm getting paid to say this. <laughs> he's not. But, everyone, he is not. But, but I, I genuinely believe that you know, entrepreneurs will solve the problems of the world. And yeah, I think you've done a really good job. Thank you. And um, if there's another fin- there's another benefit here for the financial community, which is um, as follows. So post Royal Commission, um, you know, following the protecting your super legislation, if someone had not contributed to their uh, super in 16 months, which is of course what happens when someone goes Absolutely. on that leave, right? then their super insurance is going to be cancelled. Oh, yes. my God. Yes. So, yes. So now, huh. and, and huh. then the second piece huh. of legislation, which has been unbelievably relevant for us, is that, um, again, following the PYS legislation, if a, a member hasn't contributed to their fund in 16 months, or um, then though, and their balance is less than $6,000, which yep. is yep, typically yep, yep. women, yep. then that pot of monies is removed from their super fund yeah. and return to the ATO for safeguards so that yeah. it's not being eroded An by ERF. Fees. Yeah, it's horrible. So what um, what Super Awards does actually is mitigates. Yeah, right. Keeps it alive. It keeps it alive. Keeps it on... Um, it's life support. Life support. support. Yeah, <laughs> snaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is. It's, tr- it's because we're creating a regular income stream into super. <laughs> That's so good because strangely enough, like I had, I have, I should say my insurance in an account that I don't deposit into. And it's that thing that I go, oh, Oh, I've got to remember to, you know, before the end of the financial year because of this new legislation. As an advisor, I can imagine how annoying that would be because kind of what advisors do a fair bit is um, we'll take will leave a certain amount of money in a, in a super fund to maintain that insurance over there and then, you know, move over over exactly. here. So what you could do is attach this to the... Or the, the dormant. The or, dormant, yeah, yes, it would be yes. the fund. Yes, and then exactly. you don't have to think about it and it's just getting topped up that's by right. them doing their weekly groceries. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Dude, that's so good. So, But, <laughs> but, that's, but that's it. So that's... An, um, you know, and then the financial advisory community is quite different to the rest of the population. Again, yeah, of course because it is. they're yes. of course thinking about oh, must have you know, must make sure that that well, we fund think is about all this stuff all the time. Exactly, but now um, you don't have to. Yeah, because yeah, you yeah. just you you know you're setting up super rewards. It keeps yeah. that fund alive, keeps super insurances in place. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, Done. That's uh, that's yeah. I hadn't Done. even thought about that, but that is absolutely a real life. Um, case study of, of why that would be helpful to an advisor. Um, so where do you see this all? Like, where do you see this all going? I mean, this is. I mean, you just launched, right? Three weeks ago. Yeah, huge. <laughs> You're already on the telly and everything, right? So, like, where? Do, I mean, I feel like it's it's going to be hard to uh, add additional things because you know, I. However. You, you came up with this idea to begin with. I think it's going to be very hard to replicate to do another one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think this is a really good idea. It, I'll take my hat off to you. You can keep them coming out. <laughs> but, um, but, I mean, is, is the goal now, from, from a business point of view, to tackle this, to nail this? Are you going to take it overseas? Like, are you going to take it to the US? I mean, ultimately, you, you, you're not going to be able to, what do you call it, a put ip around an idea sure but you can certainly if you're the one executing and succeeding at this it's going to be hard to come after you so that's right what what, what's the future what does the future hold Uh, and uh, i mean uh, with full reality that you're three (laughs) weeks into launch so uh so lofty ambitions um i think is the is the summary there but you know let's think about it from a geography perspective um so firstly you know emily my co-founder and i uh emily you've met emily yes um 
our our goal is fundamentally in Australia to help as many women as possible cool. close their gender super gap. Cool. Um, why are she and I both driven by this? Well, we, we both have two daughters, and I also have a son, um, for whom we don't see change un- unless we make it, right? So we see this, you know, really at, at a personal level, and we want, we want our, the, you know, the future for our children to be a better one, a, a more gender equal one. So we are trying to obviously talk to as many people, as many groups, as many organizations, as many sectors of the financial community and also non-financial community about super awards so that we can just make a difference to as many women as possible, full stop. Um, Now, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, there is a global gender pension gap. Oh, yeah. And the... um, Australia's probably better than the rest of it. Especially after government benefits. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It, it is better than the rest of it. Um, we are. Uh, I've already had friends contact me from New Zealand and Singapore, going, "Can you please roll this out here yeah, because we yeah, need yeah, it?" Yeah. yeah. Um, and both, as it happens, both those countries have very similar models to ourselves. So, yep. uh, watch this space. Um, but next week, uh, we are off to New York because go on. Yes, uh, we won a fintech scholarship. So, Hello. Yeah. So we're one of two Aussie fintechs and three UK fintechs. Suffice to say, of course, we're the only women. But anyway, um, <laughs> and so we're off to New York on yeah. um, Saturday week for a week-long immersion program. Cool. Um, to start, and we've got meetings set up with various financial houses, um, huge brands like eBay and so on, about how Imagine. we that well just Imagine quite, you could get amazon and ebay um just that would be crazy ebay australia is about to come onto the platform here. are you serious i am serious that's so good it's, it, we're, we're days away yes wow yes and their tr- their support has been tremendous how do you how, okay how are you walking into these rooms <laughs> and being like oh you know how you, just, you know how your shareholders uh want right. to keep as much money as possible uh, that's right how do i give it to the retirement <laughs> funds of my clients look i'm just an upstart startup right <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 um but i think i mean increasingly uh, you know brands recognize that they need to stand for something sure ah uh, yeah 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 Cool, but they're also huh. um, and they they but they also from an economic perspective understand that it's the women who keep their cash registers ringing, yeah, um, and making the household yeah, spending. Actually, it makes kind of sense, right? So because uh, from their point of view, if they can attract more customers because women get superannuation, ah, that's just cost of acquisition for them. Totally. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So they they are they they've got this really nice message message about being able to stand up and say, "Hey women, we yeah. see you. Yeah. We are standing up for you today, tomorrow and into retirement." Cool. Yeah. But there's also an economic um advantage here and that we've uh let's say there's company A and company B in a particular um sector who are the leaders, we are only partnering with company A. Stop it. So Coles is out. <gasps> Sorry Coles. Sorry, Coles. Your words, not mine. <laughs> um, but they, so that's that's how we've positioned it. Yeah, exclusivity yes. is yeah. Uh, hugely valuable. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the reasons why uh, X Y, uh, you know, we're five years in is our ninety five percent of our revenue comes from advertising, and um, a large part of that is attached to our event tours. And yeah, we do the same thing, right? So uh, each event tour, we we hold a spot exclusively for whatever vertical you're in yes. so it makes sense yes mm. yes so um we've yeah we, we've got the key i don't think we really touched on the retailers we've got key categories covered so um it's not all girls right sure. or, or women oriented because yeah, yeah, yeah. we are you know um we're catering for men as well yep so we've got household um homewares you know sports children pharmacy travel um fashion beauty We've even given shoes their own category now because we've wow. got so many yeah, right. yeah. shoe retailers on there. Um, electronics yeah. um, and, and some awesome, awesome brands. And I really do want to give a shout out to the brands because they have come to the party, to your point, in a way we would not have expected. Yeah. So Woolies, I know they had a bad week last week, dear Woolies, but <laughs> um, but they've they've really you know delivered over and above what, yep. what we thought they would. 
the good guys, Microsoft, Apple, Freedom, uh, Best and Less, Clarks, uh, like, you know, the iconic um, Country Road, Booktopia, Pet Barn. So all your Christmas shopping, for the first time, you are going to be able to earn super while doing your Christmas shopping. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> that's a nice place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, some, it's somewhat assuages the guilt, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. And I think, um, I think from, from an advice point of view, if I could redirect my clients from frequent flyers... Yes. To this. Yes. Because there's a whole like, there's a whole, the problem with frequent flyers is there is a bit of an ego attached to it because then I get to sit in business class and there's this whole thing yeah. which fully skews uh, purchasing decisions. So people say, yes. oh, I don't mind spending all this because I'm going to end up in a nice lounge in Paris, right? And it's so, you know, it's so, it just leads to really poor spending decisions. Um, whereas I don't think, you know, someone trying to build their super is going to create the same ego, uh, centered decision. No. I, I don't see it. I could be wrong, but I don't see someone going out spending a lot of money to get more money in super. No. I, I, I feel like, and why I, again, I'm a big fan of this is because it is just maximizing the behavior that already occurs. And it, and it probably super is pretty boring. So hopefully it, and I can't see how it would distort the spending habits yeah, of the people that are using it. No, no. And already um, we're seeing some, what I would call some really smart shopping on Super Awards. Cool. What does that mean? Um, so we're seeing, obviously you're going to do well from Super Awards if you shop online all the time with us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're seeing quite a bit of that. Even in our early days, you know, when, we, you, when we, you say smart shopping, you mean like uh, shops are just buying or, their Coca Cola, for example, um, restocking I, their. I, we're seeing people, uh, particular customers, mm-hmm. just clearly doing all their shopping. Sure. With Super Awards. Yeah. So they're shopping at not just Woolies for the groceries, but, you know, best and less and budget pet products and sure. book depository and blah, 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 blah. Yep, yep. So, you know, they're covering all the sectors. So they're doing all yep. their, everything they need via Super Awards. Yep. But then we're also seeing some um, some really big purchases go through. So clearly, a few people have been to, you know, and a white goods provider. Sure. Don't yeah. know which one. Yeah, yeah. S- decided which fridge or whatever yeah. that they want, and then they bought it online with us. What about a car? Can you buy a car through your website? Not yet. <laughs> but what about I'm- a house? Stop it. Stop. That's the... Uh, uh, I know. Call McGrath. Do it now. Uh, I've already got a meeting. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine? That would be insane. As my nine-year-old girl says, boom. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Yes. Oh. oh. That's... That's a whole thing. That is That's a, a whole, whole thing. new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon... But would McGrath? So well, I've here's not, the thing. No, as you've I've already, got, you've already, yeah. uh, we, I've already figured out why a company would do it. It's because it's just cost of acquisition. If you can sort of that's right. make that message loud yeah. and proud enough, you're going to attract. As a, yeah. as a, even as as a husband, if I'm going to purchase a house, mm-hmm. and my wife says, "Hey, I'm using this thing. Also, if we buy a house through this real estate agent, mm-hmm. I get mm-hmm. this. Hmm. Oh, that." You now we're talking. This is like, oh, yeah. yep, like, interesting. Oh yes, yes. And then That's on the big. other side of, of that particular yeah. thought process, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to get in to see um, uh, to the people. You know, Gladys, right? Talk stamp duty. I don't know a lot about stamp duty. No, me neither. Other than it's horrendous, <laughs> and we all have to pay it. <laughs> we all have to pay it, but. I just wonder if, like, government would be able to just, like, you know, tithe a little bit oh. of stamp duty. Just do you reckon you could get some tax involved here? See, tax is complicated. Oh, ta- yeah, it used to be a tax yeah. account. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, see, yeah, I'm, yeah. now yeah. I am treading in. <laughs> no, 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 no. But well, I'm just but, fully agreeing with you. Tax is really complicated. But yeah. imagine, because you know, the, there's a reason that New South Wales is um, the richest state. In Australia, is it because we're it home is because to the New South Wales Blues? No, 
<laughs> it's because of stamp duty. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I know. We are yeah. so flush with funds as yeah. a result of stamp duty. And it's because of the national obsession with property. We must own property. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Must, we must own it. We must buy it. We must do it. <laughs> I mean, look at the shows like The Block and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the success that they've had. But I, I just, I would love to meet Gladys and, you know, give her a dig in the ribs and say, mm. Gladys, you know that homeless problem we have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how's about we just, you know, tithe um, a f- like a 0.001% or yeah. whatever of the annual revenues created yeah. by Stamp Duty yeah. into, you know. Um, Homelessness. Homelessness. That would be cool. Yes. That would be yes. super cool. Because there's a lot of these, because obviously, like, and we've spoken about this before, XY and Super Rewards are both, we're both for-profit businesses, but we're very much... Uh, pro- with purpose. Uh, yeah, with purpose, right. So, um, so uh, that's, so if you guys were doing, uh, sort of tackling homelessness with stamp duty, that would just be a, an advocacy uh, yes. thing that you would be doing. Yes. I'd, I mean, it's hard to argue with. Yeah. Yeah. Homelessness seems to be, for some reason, a... uh, I mean, it's like... The way that I look at it is it's uh, like a mental health issue. Like, I I walk past and I see that these people are are suffering. Yes. uh, But clearly, they can't be entirely mentally in a good place. No. And so, I kind of look at it and go, you know... if they could afford some good counselling, they'd probably get their life together. Maybe get off the drugs. Yeah, but see yeah. what see, and this is, and here we're coming full circle. Um, the people that you're observing on the street tend to be male. Yeah, definitely with, with mental yeah, health yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fastest growing segment of homeless people in Australia is actually the 55 year old woman. Yeah, I have heard this. Yeah, and and they're called the invisible homeless. Yeah, I'd, because you don't see them. No, on I, the street. and I haven't seen it. Yeah. So. Um, because of the, you know, the, the flaws in the super system, um, and because you know there is, if we think about you know twenty five years ago, right when super was or a bit more when super was implemented, um, a, a lot of women were in the workforce or had stepped out of the workforce to have children, stayed at home, yeah, looked yeah, after yeah. the kids. Da, 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 da. Now in their early fifties, there's a marital breakdown. Yeah, um, and he gets the super. And so, and she maybe she gets the house, or, or maybe it's been a particularly acrimonious separation, and she doesn't get much at all. Um, who knows? But the bottom line is that um, there, you know, forty percent of single women, which translates to roughly one in every six women, is retiring into poverty. And I, for one, think that in a country as wealthy as ours, where our super industry alone makes thirty-two billion in fees each year, I think that's disgraceful. Yeah, and, and so, now I am off my soapbox. No, 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 but, no. So, so okay, cool. But, so, but, on top but, of all the stuff you're doing, um, you know, with helping people get more into super, yes, you'd also like to say, hey, Gladys, let's maybe tackle some of this homelessness problem as well, which Why is super not? cool. Yeah, no, like, Why not? No, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Entrepreneurs really are the, the going to solve the world's problems. But anyway, I know you are presenting uh, to. Um, what are you presenting to later today? It's a panel <laughs> a on. Panel. Uh, it's it's, it's hosted very by important. the yes. It's hosted by the Economic Security for Women uh, uh, organization, which is an NFP with, with whom we're working very closely, obviously. Um, and we've got the Diversity Council of Australia there, Carers New South Wales, um, other bodies, uh, University of Sydney, uh, and various sort of women's cool. groups representatives. Yep. So, and yeah. then and then for for the advisors out there that are listening and they're thinking. I would like to offer this because it's not a financial product as a suggestion to my clients mm-hmm. for them to change their spending habits. What's the website? Super-rewards.com. Easy. So easy. Thanks for coming in. I really appreciate sort of uh, your time, but also I'm pretty impressed with, you know, solving world problems with, uh, with you know, unique solutions. So well done. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thanks.